What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off in the last video and add the real-time database and cloud storage to our Next.js application. So on the screen right now is everything we did last video. If you missed that, be sure to check that out. The link for that can be found in the description. So back in VS Code, the first thing that we want to do is create a new folder inside of the components directory. And we will name this real-time database. Now inside of here, we're going to have one file, and we're simply going to name this counter.js. And if you recall, in the beginning of last video when I showed you the demo of this project, what we're building here is a simple counter, and when you click the button, it will save that count in the database, increase it by one, fetch it back, and display it on the screen. So to help us do this, we're actually going to use the API routes and pages. So go ahead and create a new one. It's just a simple JavaScript file. We need a fetch count.js and we need an increment count.js. First thing we need to do is define our component inside of counter. Okay, so here is our simple component. And we also need to import Firebase and we need to import the real-time database from Firestore. So we'll do that just like this. Now inside of counter, we can return and we're just going to return a simple button. The text for this button will be increase count. And what we want to do is we want to dynamically display the count. So we can do that like this and we need to create a variable for this count. We're going to do that by using use state. So we need to import use state and that is from React. And then up here we can say const declare our variable count and a method sent or set count that will be equal to use state. And initially set the count to, we could do zero, but I'm going to set it to an empty string. Um, so we can display an empty string while we're fetching rather than zero. So inside of here, instead of just displaying the variable count, we can say count question mark count else colon display this. So essentially what this is doing is it's checking, is there a variable count? If not, or sorry, if there is display this count, display the number. If there is not display this loading. So let's go ahead and create our method for increase count. We're going to do this again above the return statement. We can say cons increase count. This will be an asynchronous method. And inside of here, we want to call our fetch count or our increment count API. We'll say const because we want to store this in a variable register count and use some error notation fetch inside of here we can pass in our api root so that is on slash api slash and i named mine increment count and what we want to do is we need to pass in a unique id that distinguishes the current user that is currently logged in because we don't want the count to be the same for each user. So what we can do is we can say question mark ID is equal to dollar sign. And then inside of here, we'll say encode URI component, pass in the ID. And what we need to do is we need to actually pass in this ID to the component. So up here, that's why I added these braces inside of there simply do id so that will fetch the count and then we want to call this so right inside of here we'll say register count that will invoke that method now how are we calling this well that will simply be an on click listener for the button so we'll say on click increase whoops not index database increase count so this should successfully increase the count after we, of course, complete 
this API route. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Open up increment count. We need to import uh, the database and Firebase. Let's declare a simple API root uh, method syntax. So this is the same as a component, except we're using this asynchronous keyword and we're passing in rec and res. And we're gonna use that. So just like Cloud Firestore, we need a reference to our um, database. We're gonna call that ref. And that will be equal to firebase.database.ref. And as you can see by this pop-up, this is the reference name. We're going to name this counts. So if it is there, it will grab it. If not, it will create a reference name count.child. Passing in rec.query.id. And this rec here, this request is coming from right here. Remember, we're passing that in. And we can grab that by using query.id because id is a query name parameter. Once we make a reference to it, we can get the snapshot of it. We'll say const snapshot equal to await ref dot, we can say transaction count. So what we want to do now is check if the count is null, make it one, and if it's not null, increment it, it by one. So we can do that very easily just like that. And then at the end, we need to return our status. This will be a 200 status dot JSON. And we're gonna say total colon snapshot dot val. And that is all we need to do for the increment count API root. So let's go ahead and test this out. Open up index.js. We need to import the counter component. Counter, and that is from components slash real-time database slash counter. We can add that right above the log out button. And now inside of our application, we see increase count, and we're displaying this because we don't have a count yet. Now, if we hit this, nothing happens because it's all on the back end. So let's open up our database and see if it, it was added. So as you can see, we have undefined one. If I hit it again and go back quickly, undefined is equal to two. And that's because I forgot to pass in the ID. So back in index, on the counter object, we need to say ID is equal to, and we're gonna make it the user ID. Okay, now I go back here, and I already have a count for uh, my email here. I believe it's this one. So when I click increment count, this 15 should go to 16. Let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. See, it increases to 16. So that is working well. Now we need to fetch that count back. So instead of creating a method for this, we're gonna wrap this inside of a use effect because we want this to uh, get invoked every time we increment the count. So let's import use effect from React. We'll call it right here. And then inside of here, we're going to say const on count increase, we can grab the count, we want to set the count, remember that's this here, we're going to set it as count.value, and at the end of this use effect, before I forget, we'll need to say comma, and then pass in the ID like that. Okay, back inside of here, the next thing we're going to do is declare a method fetch data. Make sure to spell that right. This will be asynchronous. Inside of here, we're going to say Firebase dot database dot ref counts dot child id dot off value 
on count increase. Okay, and then we want to call that. And then we're going to return the same. We're going to return this line here. And this should be on, not off. There we go. So firebase.database.ref counts.childid.on value on account increase, and then return the same line except off. And if I hover over this, you can read what this does. So if I come here, you can see I didn't do anything. The count is now displayed. If I hit it, it increases to 17 and it is increasing in the database as well. So just to recap what that's doing, you click the button, calls increase count, which fetches this API route, passing in the ID, it increments the count. On that increment, use effect is fired, and we are fetching the data, returning it here, and then it is dynamically displaying that value to the user. So that is how to interact with the real-time database. Lastly, we're going to look at storage. So storage is this tab right here, and it basically just allows us to upload images, videos, any of that sort of stuff. Close out all of this, and we just need one file for storage. We'll store that inside of the components folder, call the folder storage, and then a folder and or sorry, a file inside of that called upload file. Because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be uploading files to the storage. So like we've been doing, the first thing we're going to do is import our Firebase and our Firebase slash storage. We'll create our component and we will export it. Now what we're going to return is some empty HTML to wrap everything together. And then first thing we want is a progress indicator. We can use the progress tag for that. We'll set the value to a dynamic value. For that, we can import use state. And I'm also going to throw in use ref because we're going to need that very shortly. And then use use state to declare our value in our set value. And initially, we will make that zero. And then this also takes a max property. And we'll set the max to 100. And then we also need an input tag. And here's where we will actually be inputting our file. So we'll click it. Our, it will prompt us to drag in a file. We'll drag it in, and it will upload it. So the type will be file on change. We're going to invoke a method called upload file, which we have not created yet, but we will do that very shortly. And then we'll set the ref equal to input el, so input element. So what we can do is the file we uploaded will be accessible on this object. And that's all we need to return. Now let's get into the logic of it. Let's create our function, upload file. And this will be pretty straightforward compared to the other things we've been doing, like real-time database. First off, we will get the file, input l dot, and that will be equal to the input element dot current dot files zero. And the reason I know this is because I uploaded a file and I logged out this value to the console. And when I did that, I saw that we have this current property and then it is, a, it is simply a list of files. So if we grab the first one, we'll get the file we just uploaded. Now we need a reference to our storage ref in, uh, in Firebase. We'll say var storage ref is equal to Firebase dot storage dot ref. We're going to store all the uploads in a folder called user uploads slash and then we're going to add the file dot name. So again this name is coming off this current file here and right here 
all this will do is create a folder like you can see here called user uploads and because I added the slash at the end it will make a subdirectory so we can go into it and see everything we've uploaded. So this was getting the file. This was creating a storage ref. Now we need to actually upload the file. We'll say var task is equal to storage ref dot and to upload files we're just going to use the put method passing in our file. So that right there will upload the file but we want to go one step further and display the progress to the user. That was why we added this HTML progress tag. So we can say task dot on change. So to do that, we can use the promise returned from the task. So we'll say task dot on state change is the event listener that we want. And then we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to say function progress snapshot and this will return the progress of the upload to us and what we want to do with that is we want to set the value so we'll say set value and then what we need to do is use the snapshot dot and then we get bytes transferred and we get total bytes so to get the percent done we are we simply do the total bytes transferred divided by the total bytes and all of that times 100. And then we need to create a function for an error and log that out if we have one and a function for complete. So here we go, just a simple error function catching any errors and alerting the user and a simple complete function again just alerting the user that it finished uploading. So now the last step is to go back into index import this and we'll throw that right below the counter. Now if we go back to our application, okay we're getting error input L is not defined. Let's see where we are going wrong here. Uh, right we didn't define that because we can't grab it like this. What we need to do is we need to say const input L and set that to use ref and initially that's going to be null and that should be good. Okay, we come back here, we see the progress and a choose file. So if we hit choose file, we get a pop-up. All right, so I'm just going to try to upload this image of the Flutter logo. We'll hit open and upload it successfully. So we didn't see anything happen here and that's because it uploads too fast. Um, but we do see it's complete. So let's go ahead and open up our storage, refresh, and we should see that upload. Here we go, flutter.png. There it is. Let me just go ahead and upload a video so you can actually see the progress indicator working. Okay, here the screen record. Let's try this. And you can see this is taking a lot longer but we can see it loading. All right guys, so that is the end of this video. I hope you were able to successfully connect your Next.js application to the real-time database and cloud storage. Just a reminder, all of this code is on my GitHub, so if you ran into any trouble or want to copy and paste, you can go to my GitHub and grab the code. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you like this video. Stay tuned for more tutorial videos like this.